My name is Julie. Sharon Chalmers. I want to put my middle name in there. <laughs> it means light, light hair. <laughs> my grandmother was Annie Patience, and I had an Auntie Mary. And so they put it together, uh, and Anne Marie. Marty Bennett. Alexandra White. Dad's auntie's name was Margaret, and people called her Marty for short. Frida Morugi Mushiri. But it's not, my name's not Margaret, it's Marty. <laughs> uh, the meaning of my name is a helper of mankind. Full of grace. <laughs> Sharon Marie White. Julie Mary Iso. So Iso is, I looked it up once. My middle name is Morugi. That means a good cook. And I'm actually a very good cook. Iso means Jesus. My mum is a beautiful person inside and out. Uh, she basically is my rock and my best friend. Always very patient, very loving, very kind. <sighs> my mum was wonderful. She's a great role model. She set a great, um, I think she's set a great standard for me. Oh, how talk about my mum the whole day. She is um, a very positive person extremely kind. Um, with her loyalty to her husband, my dad, and to us children, she was very loving. She was a great example for me in that. Just brought colour into the room uh, when she would walk into a room and she loved people well. The most amazing, inspiring woman. She, she probably is the reason that I desire and chose to have a relationship with Christ. Uh, so actually because, because of her that I am here living the life that I'm living, um, being truly blessed and just loving God. So that's definitely the best thing that my mum did for me. My grandmother was a Catholic and she had a very strong faith. Um, I think that's where it came down the line to my father, to myself. And I was like, no, mum was once a teenage girl just like me and she knows what I'm going through. And even if she doesn't, she is still there for me and she will support me and help me. Very peaceful woman and she loves the Lord so much. Very prayerful and she adores just being around people and she's extremely generous. And it doesn't matter how much you or little you give us, she shares with the whole world around us. So she, She's everything one can look for. Very wise. Um, she is good with advice and it's been interesting. She's got teenage uh, grandchildren and they're, they're coming to her for some words of wisdom. So that's been nice and they've um, given her some doozies, that's for sure. Uh, as I got older, um, you know, I had a lot of self-esteem issues and things like that and she was able to let me go and to step out of my comfort zone to, in order to be able to grow and, and um, just be the person that I am today. This is my mother, myself, Sharon and Alex, four generations of females. So this is my mum and I in the photo. Um, I think I was probably... 25 then when this photo was taken and so just yeah just like yesterday <laughs> holding a photo of myself winning a um, baby competition apparently apparently I was did a really good job of laying still I don't know <laughs> on Mother's Day <laughs> <laughs> not one, in use then one two three <laughs> oh gosh people <laughs> Okay. <laughs> wait, we'll wait. It's okay. hard. Go on, you count. One, two, three. We're actually facing one of the hardest things that we've um, faced uh, as a family, and that is um, the birth of my first son. We had journey through a lot of things growing up as a family, inclusive of a family breakdown and things like that. Uh, but him being born um, very purple and blue in colour and silent and lifeless and a code blue called with lots of medical staff running in and, and saving my child's life. Being on that journey together has been an incredibly hard thing and I would 
definitely say the hardest thing so far that we've all journeyed together. When I was 16, I was pregnant and it was put to me to have an abortion or to leave home. I just was just cried most most times I was in my bedroom and but there was one night that I felt um, someone brush my hair and just tell me everything was going to be okay and I really thought my mum had come into the room and that, but when I looked around there was no one in the room the door was closed I believe it was God so I felt that all the plans of my life had fallen apart um, I felt quite angry with God that life didn't work out the way it should have um, but God had a different plan it just wasn't my plan I didn't really know whether my faith was my choice even like through Uncle Marky's death I lost I realized that I had lost a lot of faith in God and I there were moments where I was like is he actually real mum definitely helped me to grow that faith back after Uncle Mark and she like would explain why that happened like the other night um, mum came into my room and I asked her the question about heaven and like we had different point of views on it. Um, I still don't have my head around her point of view but one of the most difficult things that I've had to go through is just becoming a mum. Um, I found motherhood really hard to start with. I thought the first six weeks of Harrison's life were a nightmare <laughs> and if I could have given him back I would have. <laughs> I would have said I was probably close to some depression um, six weeks in and my mum just spoke really directly to me and in all honesty I can't even remember what she said but whatever it was it just broke something. So I'd read all the magazines, all the books but still they didn't make sense when the reality hits, the baby is here and I kept on waking up in the middle of the night to listen whether he's breathing. The hardest thing I've, I have been through in my life has, is, my, um, is my divorce, my marriage breakup. And my mum was um, a rock for me. Um, she cried with me, prayed for me, prayed with me. Um, was a shoulder to cry on. She didn't get everything completely. She didn't understand everything the, the, in all the circumstances, but um, she was a rock. She was my rock. She is my rock. How did I come to faith? They said, Jesus loves you. And in my upbringing, it was always, God will punish you for your sins. And to hear the, God loves you, my goodness, it was just the, the light went on. That's, that's what I know my God as always pray for that personal relationship with God because I believe once they have that understanding then they are able to face any storm in life and call upon his name. They actually they've come and told me mommy I prayed when I faced issues on the school playground those squabbles and I called Jesus and Jesus asked me to walk away. The moment that we found out uh, his diagnosis when I was 23 weeks pregnant, the verse in which holds great significance and, and value to me is Joshua 1 verse 9. Um, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wow, uh, it's a big question to think of what my prayer is for my children and for my generations to come. For me, being around people who don't know God it makes me quite upset because they don't get to see and feel the love of God yet. But um, I'm always praying that they do eventually have a connection and God always will make his move at different times. So Jeremiah 29 11, uh, that is, for I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. And, and there are prayers like one of the twin Moremi actually prays in spirit. And he says big time things like, oh, even if we walk through the valley of shadow of death, we shall not fear. I mean, such things are quite amazing to hear a child who is 10 years pray like that. And scattering the devil in seven directions is his favorite. And that's quite amazing for me. And that they, and I wish I could protect them from all harm, like any mum, like any parent. 
a whole stay of them. It doesn't matter what you go through. Just call upon that name and you are protected and you'll be shielded and you find that love and extend that love to others like Christ did. So, yeah. So whether you're a mum or you're not a mum or you've had a mum or you no longer have a mum, um, this is a day to celebrate us as women and what we contribute to the church and to the world and to our families. So one, two, three. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Can't do this. Enjoy the day reflecting on the joy that it is to have a mum, to be a mum, to know a mum, uh, just that it's a privilege and a gift. Okay, happy Mother's Day, everyone. <laughs> <That's she. laughs> happy, happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Day. Gosh, anyone need tissues? <laughs> Thank you to the women who appeared in that video. It's made me very emotional. Um, I love to hear stories, and I don't think we get to hear them often enough. So thank you for sharing yours. Thank you for, to Justin, who put in a whole lot of effort to put that video together. Hey, you've heard me say it before, and you're going to hear me say it again. Women play such an important role in the plans and purposes of God. I believe that their example and their voice and their perspective that they bring to the table is absolutely necessary if we're gonna see generation to generation come to faith in God and see the Father's work in this world. So um, our one goal today was to thank and to um, honor the mothers in our lives. And I'm just gonna keep that going now by spending just a little bit of time um, this morning looking at how the Bible honors mums. Um, if you're new to Christianity, um, if you're still just checking it out, if you know bits and pieces about the Bible, you may have been led to believe that women get a pretty bad rap in the ancient scriptures. And no doubt when we look at those ancient writings through 21st century eyes, um, the, the beliefs and the practices and the norms of that day do leave um, a lot to be desired. But equally true is the fact that women were given incredible honour and incredible dignity, most often by the key players, uh, God the Father, Jesus, Paul, John, and so on. Women were honoured for being teachers and evangelists and prophets. Um, they were honoured for being apostles, businesswomen, and a whole bunch more. They were thanked in writing, and they were acknowledged for a whole bunch of roles in the emerging church. One of many was the role of mother which is what we're focusing on and celebrating today. We don't celebrate Mother's Day because the shops tell us to or because it's a day marked on our calendar. We uh, celebrate because it is clearly God's desire that we do that. And it is a it's a desire that has been clearly stated right throughout history. And what we're going to do now is just have a look at a few quick examples because I am determined to get us out of here on time so we can enjoy a cupcake before we go get our kids or head off to lunch. These examples are going to show us that motherhood comes in all shapes and sizes. The role of mother is not only for those who have been able to physically give birth to children, but includes all women who choose to participate in raising up and supporting and caring for those who need it. So whether you are a single woman with no kids or a mum with some kids or a mother in waiting or you never want to be a mum, the authors of the God-breathed scriptures say you are valued and you are honoured. You have a part to play and you have been in, fully invited in um, to take your place within the family of God who seek to raise up and support the people that God has placed in our care. So how did Jesus and the leaders among the emerging church acknowledge and honour their mums? Uh, well, one of the most well-known um, examples is Paul's acknowledgement of the part that Timothy's grandmother and mother played in Timothy's faith journey. You'll see up there it says, uh, I am reminded of your sincere faith with, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded Timothy now lives in you also. 
So even in a time when some would say men were the gatekeepers to religious teaching, women played an integral role in the formative years of their child's faith journey. Now, ultimately, I think we would want this to be everyone's story. Um, families, um, generations playing significant roles in their children coming to Christ, families leaving legacies of faith. I know I certainly hope that for my children and for my children's children, but that's not everyone's story and that may not be yours. Uh, when we consider the Apostle Paul and his relationship with his mum, it's not all that clear what part she played in his faith journey. The scriptures tell us that he was raised a devout Jew um, and he had high standing within the Jewish community. So we can assume that his mother was also um, devout, well-respected, heavily entrenched in Judaism. What she would have thought of her son, whom they had invested a whole lot of time and effort and probably money into raising as a God-fearing Jew who now suddenly seems to have jumped ship and abandoned his loyalty to Yahweh, we actually don't know what she thinks of that because Paul doesn't write about his own mother at all in the scriptures, in any of his letters. However, Paul does take the time to honour a woman who came to play that role later in his life. In Romans 16, 13, it says, um, it's, Paul is saying hi to a guy named Rufus, and he makes a point of also saying hi to Rufus's mum, who he says was like a mother to him. Really interesting connection here. Uh, while we don't know this woman's name, it turns out she's actually the wife of Simon of Cyrene, who helped to carry the cross for Jesus to Calvary. So I love the way God works. Paul would have probably been one of the cheering crowd condemning Jesus and mocking Simon, and later he's nursed back to health and treated like a son by Simon's wife. I think that is so cool. Maybe you resonate a little more with Paul's story. Maybe your story includes a woman who stepped in and played the role of mother when you most needed it, who lifted you up or came alongside you and to encourage and support you in a time when you needed it most. I mean, maybe your own mother couldn't or didn't. Maybe today you're giving thanks for a spiritual mother in your life. John, the disciple that Jesus loved, had a spiritual mother, uh, in John 19, verses 25 through to 27, we see this beautiful interaction between Jesus, Jesus' mum Mary, and the disciple he loved, John. Jesus is on the cross, and he looks down at the very small group of people gathered near him, and he looks at, um, he, he looks at Mary, and he says, Mother, here is your son, indicating John. And to John, he says, Here is your mother. Now, I've always looked at this passage and thought Jesus' primary concern in that moment was his mum because we know the circumstances and the context of that day um, and it meant that, you know, women, it wasn't good for women to be without family. Uh, women needed men to protect them and support them. Jesus was um, not going to be around for much longer and so I'm thinking one of his last dying wishes was that um, his mother be taken care of um, in the future, her well-being, that sort of thing. Except Mary had other sons, other sons who would soon become Jesus' followers themselves. So maybe Jesus' greater concern here is not that Mary have a son to take care of her but that John have a mother to take care of him. Now, maybe you've always seen that, but for some reason that was a revelation to me recently. And I think it is such a beautiful example of the importance and the value that Jesus gave to the role of mother. Mary had other sons, but Jesus wanted the disciple he loved to have a mum, a woman who would foster faith, who would lend her wisdom and her strength when he needed it. So I believe God's desire is that we would all have mums who would spiritually, physically and emotionally care for us as we navigate the ups and downs of the Christian life, whether they be our biological mums or our spiritual mums. So again, we just wanted to take some time today to say thank you and to acknowledge the women who have and who are playing the role of mother, those who are for us, those who grow us, those who nurture us, those who are challenging us. 
please know that you are absolutely valued. We value what you contribute, we value the examples that you are setting, and we value the legacy that you are building for the kingdom of God. Thank you for taking seriously your part to grow faith in the next generation. Thank you for opening your homes and your hearts to people who may not actually be your own children. Thank you for your encouragement and your kindness, for your wisdom and your strength. Thank you for those who juggle work and home life. Thank you for giving back to us the gifts that God has given you. God the Father loves you and he values you. Jesus kept that sentiment going right through to the end of his life and we're just following in his and the leaders of the emerging church's footsteps today by saying thank you. I'm going to get my mum and Marie and my daughter Alexandra up here now. We're going to close off the service by um, praying for our congregation. Um, As they come up, can I just please encourage you today to find a way to honour your mum, whether that be by uh, calling her or texting her or visiting her, um, buying her lunch, however that might be. Maybe you can't do that because your mum's not with you anymore. Uh, Can I still ask you to find a way to creatively honour your mum? Maybe it might mean um, connecting with a sibling in order to honour the family that she raised. Maybe it's having a cuppa in a teacup she left you, wearing the daggy jumper she knitted you. (laughs) However that might be, I, I hope that all of us will find some time today to stop and reflect and give thanks to God for the truly wonderful gift. It is to have mothers that we know, mothers that we are, mothers that we have. We're gonna pray and um, just, no, Justin might come and close us off. All right, Alex is gonna lead us off. Go for it. Dear God, I pray here today on behalf of the kids. Thank you for our mothers who unconditionally love us and care for us with every passing day. But especially today, we want to lift up all the mums across the world and thank them, f- thank them for playing the very special role they play in each of their kids' lives. We thank them for the grace they showed us when we didn't deserve it, for believing in us when no one else did, for providing us with an education and the food in our bellies of being a proud mum. Us kids don't thank the mums in our lives enough, and sometimes it might come off that we don't appreciate everything they do for us or that we are embarrassed by them. But ev- But God, every little thing a mum does in our lives, we take into life with us. We cherish every moment and take in every lesson. We are so grateful for our mums. So thank you, God, for leaving each and every one of us kids with a precious, beautiful mum. I um, want to just pray for the people today who find Mother's Day painful. Uh, Everyone is, and everyone's story is different. Um, I don't know what people are thinking and feeling today, but I know that some will find today painful. I pray for those who have lost mothers, who only have memories to cherish. I pray for our sisters who are struggling with infertility. uh, infertility. I pray, Father, um, that you would give them the desires of their heart. We hope alongside them today. Lord, I pray for those who don't have good relationships with their mums. I ask that you would bring alongside them spiritual mothers to step into that place. And I pray, Lord, for those who have lost children who find today particularly painful as they reflect on their life as a mother. I ask, Lord, that you would give us peace, that you would give them comfort, that you would surround them with people today, that you would fill their hearts with joy as they consider memories um, that hopefully were good ones. And I ask, Lord, that um, no matter what has gone before, that we would be thankful to you. Lord, you write only good stories that sometimes include hard things. I pray, Father, that no matter what the story involves, that we would find a way to honour you first today and give thanks for the people that you've brought into our life to help us. My prayer today is from Jeremiah 29, 11. 
For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Then when you then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you. I want to pray for the grandmothers, the mothers, our children and our grandchildren. I pray that they know the plans that God has got for them. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you have plans for us, plans to not harm us, but to prosper us. I thank you, Father God, that you take us on this adventure, a venture of finding out where our place is in your kingdom. Lord, I just lift up everyone to you that they will find these plans, that they will just allow you to join them as you guide them to to fulfill these plans lord in this all i just pray for your your pray your pla- your patience lord that when we don't want to do what you have for us that you just give us your grace and mercy fill us Lord, with your unconditional love. And we just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.